Imagine you're playing your favorite game, Call of Duty, Stalker 2, any game, and you're having fun. But then you get hit with a crash. And not just a GPU or CPU overheating crash, one of those crashes that happen at the same point, whether it's at startup, after loading the game, or when you open the pause menu. These crashes are annoying. Now in this video, I can't fix your crash specifically, but I can lead you in the correct direction to eventually fixing your issue. So let's start. So the first method of finding the culprit of a game crash is looking through the crash log. Most modern games have them and finding them isn't hard most of the time. Googling where crash logs for a game is held is the first step, but if you want to potentially skip this step, try checking in the game's save folder or in the actual game's files. Now I rarely run into crashes nowadays, but I can use an example from a previous video to show you guys what I mean. Okay, so this is a crash log from a previous video where Call of Duty was just not launching at start and that was because it was missing this file which was actually in the game's files but if you can see right here, the game's files is in the C drive right here but it is searching in the D drive. So in that video, all I did was go in and create this path and put the correct file in this folder. But of course, for the sake of this video, I'm going to show you guys where you would want to look. So all I did was go to the games files, which is one of the ways that you can find the crash log. The other would be in the saves folder. And all I did was go down here to bootstrapper.log. So you want to go into the games files, look for a log. And if you can't find that, go on Google. And most likely, if it's a bigger game, you should be able to find where crash logs are saved. And maybe even sometimes the developers will actually put out where you can find crash logs at. But in this case, Call of Duty has it right here, bootstrapper.log. I just opened it. And then you can see that it says fail to open and it is looking for a file at this specific place. Now, this is a best case scenario because it is actually showing what it is missing. But for you guys, it might give you, for instance, in a crash log, it might say 0xc000005 is the error code. And that is an issue that I actually went over in a previous video also, but that one took a lot longer to find because of course that is the error code and not actually the whole issue. Here, it gave the actual issue, but for the error code 0xc00005, that does not give you the actual issue and you would have to do a lot more searching. The next method is for complete system crashes and specifically blue screens of death. These are by far the most annoying crashes because it requires you to wait for your entire PC to boot up again to find the issue just for it to randomly happen again. Now, I've had my times with these crashes, and with research, I found a way of reading a form of logs given by your OS itself, so let me show you. So for this method, all you want to do is go to your PC, go to your boot drive, and then find the folder Windows, and then in that folder, you should find a folder named Mini Dumps. So once you do that, you should find a certain amount of dump files, which basically corresponds with the amount of times that you've gotten a blue screen of death on your PC. So with these files, you cannot actually open them straight from this folder because it is in the Windows folder. So you know how Windows can be about these type of files. So you will need to move this to a downloads folder or somewhere in your downloads. And then once you do that, you want to actually download a software named WinDBG and you should be able to find it on the Microsoft Store. If not, you can find it on Google. And once you move these files to a other folder somewhere in downloads, it should be here and all you need to do is open this file and it should bring you up to this. Now, you this will look like a lot of nothing, but for you, all you need to do is click a highlighted text that will say analyze-v and then once you do that, it should give you a lot of this. Now, you don't want to worry about pretty much any of this because a lot of this is just computer language, but if you look down towards the image name or process name, or maybe even sometimes you'll get an error code, you can see that it will point towards a specific file. So in my case, it says NTO 
skrnl.xe. So that wrong that symbols it did not show this before. This is a very old file, but it still shows what you would want to see. So you want to see a XE file. Now in this case, I actually just Googled what this file was and I found some other people that actually had the same issue and looking through their forum, these files come from drivers. So in my case, it was a ethernet driver, which I don't use ethernet, but it was an ethernet driver that was having issues and was causing my PC to lose screen of death because the driver wasn't configured correctly. So I either had a choice of deleting the ethernet driver or updating the ethernet driver. I can't remember which one I did, but eventually I got it fixed. So all you want to do is just search up the name of the file that it is pointing towards, you should find a forum or some type of website that will talk about what that is. And the majority of times, if you're getting a blue screen of death and it actually points towards a file, either it is a application that is running on your PC that you installed, or it is a driver. So one of those two things, or maybe even some rare occasion, it'll be something else. But most occasions, it will just be a driver and you will need to use whatever fix you find on that website to fix it. And it has indeed worked for me. The next method is for crashes that you can't find a crash log for anywhere. Now with most crashes, you can find a file which will most likely contain a file name that caused this issue or a error code, which was my case. But sometimes it's not as simple as just a file. Sometimes you have to go on a scavenger hunt for it. And I'm going to show you one way. Now this method uses Event Viewer, which is very annoying to use because Windows is basically logging issues or just normal activities every single second, meaning that looking for a specific log is going to take a long time but i can kind of help you shorten that time a little bit so all you want to do is you want to go to windows logs and then you want to go to application now the reason why you want to go to application is because of course this issue or this log will be created because a application had a error so you want to look at application and then this is where the issue comes in so where the issue comes in is you need to search between 17,000 different events and find a specific log, but I can still somehow show you guys how to find it. So what you would want to do is first you want to check in date and time. If you check in date and time, it will take a little bit of time because it is 17,000 different events. But after it does it, you can see here that it is 1145 for me and the last event was 11:43, and then there was plenty of events during that specific time because of course from me going around and doing things throughout my system and this is one way you can find it and you want to do this right after you run into a crash so that you can find it here now most likely you will have to do a little bit more searching with this because there will be a lot of things going on, meaning that there will be a lot of events, meaning that you won't just have just that application error or crash just sitting there staring you in the face. You will need to go to level most likely and using level, it'll show different types. And you can see that if you search good enough, you should be able to eventually find the application error here, right here, the application error events, which is basically just any hanging events. So where an application has frozen or just when the application crashes or fails to do a task. So just let's say I want to go to the hanging event. You can see here that as I was working on my game, actually earlier today, I did run into a application crash for Unity. If I go lower in there, it won't give me anything specifically because Unity normally handles a lot of that. But in a special scenario, let's see if I can find one. See for here in this scenario, it actually gave me a exception code. So you see the 0xc0000409 and that is a error code that you would want to put into google now i'm pretty sure b1 win64 shipping.xe is actually black myth wukong so i'm not really sure how this has carried over because i'm pretty sure i haven't even played black myth wukong ever since i set up my new system but that doesn't matter you can see that the event is here and that it is showing that there was a crash which black myth wukong definitely has a history with crashes 
and you can see that there's an the exception code so you would just take this copy and paste to put this in, into google and it will tell you what can cause this specific exception code and if you need more you can you can add that it was for black myth wukong itself and then you might even be able to find more information on it so this is basically how you would find it as you can see here it says the application name here so it says exactly what that file is it says the it says the path and then it basically just says the exception code it tells you exactly what the issue is with the exception code you just put it in google and trust me you will be able to find some website or some forum where they basically explain the causes of that exception code and that crash Now this last method is definitely the method I avoid using on this channel the most because of how generic it is, but sadly sometimes it is simply this simple. Restarting your PC, verifying game files, reinstalling the game, or even reinstalling Windows altogether are some solutions that work more than you think. There really isn't much to explain. Using these solutions are probably the most stress-free methods you can use because it cuts out all of the troubleshooting, but I would definitely say that before you reinstall Windows, try the previous steps to avoid having to go down that road. But I can say that reinstalling Windows has eliminated 95% of my crashes. Thank you guys for watching. If this video helped you out, consider subscribing. I make content like this all the time and like the video so I know that you found this video helpful. But thanks for watching and I will see you all in the next one.